Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Safe Passage presentation. Um, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be here today. Um, it would not have been possible without all of you. We were a little bit nervous about the turnout. Um, Safe Passage, our wonderful guests, who we're going to get to in a moment, came here, took time out of their day, and I wanted to make sure we had at least 12 people come. Um, but so far, we have over 112. So the response has been really great. Thank you to everyone. I'd also like to briefly introduce the speakers, uh, Lenny Benson and Claire Thomas. These are the principals of Safe Passage. And Safe Passage is a very special program. Um, and what we're doing today is we're launching a partnership with that program, uh, Wilson Elser and Safe Passage. Uh, Wilson Elser has a team. Um, I'm on the team, Laura Alou. Greg Brescia, um, Anna Galdemez. Uh, we may have more later on, um, but our plan is to treat this as a program on a basis going forward, hopefully uh, annually. So a little bit about Safe Passage, but I'm really going to let them tell you about it because it's a wonderful group and, and I don't know if I could do it justice. Um, but as you all may be aware, in the news there, there, there's a humanitarian crisis. Um, children are coming over the border without their parents um, and, and it's leading to a tragic situation because they're being detained and they don't have access to counsel. And I just think about two, two children that I've met, uh, a four-year-old doesn't speak the language, away from their parents, has no idea what's going on. Being detained and does not have access to a counsel. If you could just think about it for a second. It's a heartbreaking situation. And then I think about the 12 year old that I met who his father was killed by a gang and said okay you're gonna be the new drug dealer. <clears throat> and the boy was smart enough to know where this life was gonna end. It was gonna be a terrible life, probably gonna be killed himself. So he escapes and he comes here. And if he's sent back, he's probably gonna be killed himself for disobeying the gang. So he and the four-year-old both have a lot on the line. This is not just immigration status. This could be their life. This is the most important thing in their life. And they desperately need counsel. And there are rights and, and programs for them that they can, if they had counsel, qualify for. Asylum, special immigrant status, juvenile status, but not speaking the language, being a juvenile, and not getting a counsel, they don't have a chance. And this is a great country, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise, um, but we cannot wait for a political resolution. It's up to us. It's up to the attorneys. It's up to the pro bono efforts. Um, otherwise, no one's going to come to their aid, and the kids are going to go unrepresented. This is our opportunity. Pro, bro, pro bono is not a burden, it's an opportunity. This is our opportunity to be the best that lawyers can be. Now I've had a few victories in my career that I, that I think back on, but the one that blows them all away was my pro bono case. I, I helped someone with a U visa and it was languishing for about two years because of the backup of the government. And the single mom with four kids, her benefits ran out, and she was homeless with four kids. And she said, Joe, I want to work. I need to get my kids in school. Please help me. And I felt pretty helpless. I didn't know what to do. So I called everybody I could. I called Congress. I called Christy, Cuomo. And a congressman called me back. Um, and he said, well, what do you want? I said, well, can we get a temporary work permit for her? And he said, well, let me call Vermont and see what I could do. So this phone call, she got a permit within a week, and she was able to get a driver's license, and a job, and an apartment, and got her kids off the street, and got the kids in school. And they wrote me the most heartfelt letter that I've ever seen, and it's hanging on my wall, and that's my treasure. And I can, I, I hope everyone in this room and, and in the other offices, thank you all for attending, takes advantage of the opportunity before you. You could really make a difference in someone's life, and this is our opportunity. So enough about me. Let me tell you a little bit about our speakers. 
First, Professor Lenny Benson has been teaching and writing in the field of immigration law since 1994. She is a professor at New York Law School and serves as the director of the New York Law School Safe Passage Project. The project recruits, trains, and mentors lawyers and student volunteers who are willing to represent immigrant youth and has won state and national awards for its promotion and support of pro bono work. She also teaches a clinic of advanced students who join other Safe Passage volunteers to screen immigrant youth at the New York Immigration Court each month. She serves on several city, state, and national task forces devoted to expand resources for immigrants, especially unaccompanied migrant children. In the fall of 2012, she became the chair of the Immigration and Nationality Law Committee for the Association of the Bar of the City of New York. In 2011-2012, she served as a consultant researcher for the Administrative Conference of the United States. With Russell Wheeler of the Brookings Institution, she prepared a comprehensive report on ways to improve removal adjudication, and that report resulted in a formal adoption over 38 recommendations by ACUS. She is the past chair of the AALS Immigration Law Section and past Immigration Committee Chair for the ABA Section on Administrative Law and Regulatory Practice. Prior to joining academia, she practiced immigration law as a partner in the Los Angeles office of Brian Cave. She is a native Arizonan and earned her degree at Arizona State College of Law in 1983. She has been an adjunct professor at Columbia teaching both immigration law and a seminar on refugee law. Professor Benson is an emeritus trustee of the American Immigration Law Foundation and is a fellow of the American Bar Foundation. Until 2012, she was a member of the LexisNexis Faculty Advisory Board. For many years, she has served on the board of the Center of Human Rights and Constitutional Law. In June of 2013, she published Immigration and Nationality Law Problems and Strategies. She has served as an expert witness on immigration law topics in administrative, civil, and criminal investigation. Benson, it's an honor to have you with us. Claire Thomas currently serves as staff attorney for the Safe Pass Passage Project. She's also an adjunct professor at New York Law School where she co-teaches a year-long course on representing immigrant children in removal proceedings. From 2009 to 2014, Ms. Thomas advocated for the rights of African and Caribbean immigrants as a legal intern and then a staff attorney at African Services Committee, a nonprofit organization in Harlem dedicated to improving the self-sufficiency of persons living with HIV and AIDS. At African Services, Ms. Thomas conducted intakes for new clients and represented French-speaking indigent per persons in family law and benefits cases. She provided pro bono representation for survivors of gender-based violence, including minors, and immigration proceedings. Ms. Thomas also directed Project Amy. Project Amy. Project Amy, better than I can say. Uh, African Service Services Committee's Women's <laughs> Empowerment Group for Survivors of Gender-Based Violence, funded by a Community Action Grant from the American Association of University Women. Ms. Thomas completed her undergraduate degree in anthropology and French at the University of Chicago, and also studied at the University of Paris, Nanterre? Nanterre. Nanterre. She holds a graduate degree from New York University Center for Global Affairs and a law degree from New York Law School. She is a member of the Immigration and Nationality Law Committee of the, American, of the Association of the Bar of the City of New York and chair of the Youth and Children Subcommittee, as well as an adjunct member of the African Affairs Committee and co-chair of the Gender Subcommittee. Ms. Thomas has presented trainings on cultural competency working with interpreters, asylum, immigration, and benefits law to students and professionals both in the U.S. and abroad. She has contributed articles on women's rights to perspectives on global issues and women for, for women's international critical half journal. Ms. Thomas speaks French fluently and is learning Spanish. 
That's some bio you guys have. <laughs> We're honored. Without any further ado, Lenny Benson. Thanks.